let me put the king of hearts there on the bottom. There it is. <laughs> when we shuffle, when we're dropping cards, well, you know, half the time after a shuffle, the king is going to be on the bottom, and half the time it's going to be up from the bottom. You know what I mean? That, that this time it's up from the bottom, but I might have dropped first from this hand, and then it would have been on the bottom. That's one sort of step. After two shuffles, of course it might still be on the bottom, but what's the chance that it's on the bottom? Well, half the time it, it had to have, the first time it had to have stayed on the bottom, and the second time it had to, so that's one in four that it's on the bottom. It could be at various other places, but let's just keep track of what's the chance that it's on the bottom. So after you know, three shuffles, it's one in eight that it's still on the bottom. You'd like that number to be close to one in 52, because when the cards are really mixed up, what's the chance the king of hearts is on the bottom? It's one in 52. Well, let's do the powers of two. You know, after one shuffle, it's a half or two. You know, on, you know it's four, six, and so two to, the, two to the sixth is 64, and two to the seventh is 128. So it's sort of in the right ballpark that just to follow one card, it, it, it's going to take you, you know, six or seven shuffles. That makes, you can start to see that, you know, uh, you know, because each time somehow, now, but of course I'm saying our theorem shows that not only is the king of hearts right, any question about the deck is right. You can ask, you know, what's the chance that the ace is above the deuce, that the three is above the seven, that there are ten hearts. Any question is right. Well, that's a lot more questions, and it's quite surprising that for any task, after seven shuffles, seven or eight or, you know, but okay. For any task, the deck is, is close to random. I like to say that if, you know, you were playing with one of your kids, maybe, you know, maybe four or five shuffles is fine uh, if your kid isn't clocking the deck, uh, but uh, if the national security depends on it, okay, shuffle 11 times. But, but there's an interesting thing that came out of that is there's a sharp answer to the question. There's a threshold, and there's an image that I can try to communicate, which is like this. Suppose I had a big bowl of glass, a big glass bowl, and it had black balls on the bottom and white balls on top. And I had a canoe paddle, it's a big bowl, and I'm stirring it with my canoe paddle, okay? At first, you know, most of the black balls are on the bottom, and then there's big swaths of black and big swaths of white. There's nothing random about it at all. And then all of a sudden, it turns gray. And then it stays gray. You know, it stays being mixed. Well, that's what happens with most any mixing process. Um, that's, again, a theorem. That is, there's a sharp threshold uh, that before that threshold, it's... This, you can see the structure, it's not random, and after that threshold, it's about as random as it can be. And it, well, of course, it's never perfectly random. It goes to random exponentially fast, but it, it, it stays flat and then it dips down. And, uh, and the it that I'm talking about is the answer to almost any question. How many cards can I guess right? Or um, if you take some test for randomness that you like, before the seven shuffles, or three halves log to the base two of n, the the cards the, the you you can you'll fail the test and after you'll pass it and for any test so so that's sort of it's nice that there's a satisfactory answer you know it, it might have been that it just sort of dropped smoothly in which case there's no right answer you know it just sort of gets more and more random as you shuffle it does get more and more random but this phase transition which we call the cutoff phenomena um, happens in most every mixing scheme and so that's made a new area of mathematics people trying to understand you know why does the cutoff phenomena happen and is it, can you show that for most mixing schemes it's true and when doesn't it happen it doesn't always happen we can find randomization schemes where there is no cutoff but you have to work at it did this change casino policies around the world? Was this a was this a an earthquake for them? Well, uh, it's uh, it, it's it'll probably be on my tombstone. Seven shuffles, you know, suffice. They did change the laws in Nevada, so uh, that's that's one <laughs> that's one uh, one point. And what's to say? I Cards had to be shuffled seven, seven times. times, right? And it's seven shuffles plus two of these. You see, these are all the same. This, this, 
you know, in the hands, or the way they do it in a casino is this way. Oop, they don't do that. <laughs> you know, so they'll, they'll, they'll strip cut. So the, the, the laws are they, they do seven shuffles and intersperse it with strip cuts. That's for 52 cards. I'm working on a funny project now, which came both from security business, cryptography, and also from Dungeons and Dragons and crazy things like that. I had two colleagues come to me and say, how do I shuffle large decks of cards? One of my colleagues had a son who plays Dungeons and Dragons type game, and they have special cards with goodness knows what on them, and uh, there are 250 of them, and you can't riffle shuffle 250 cards. And is there a reasonable scheme for physically mixing up large decks of cards? Of course, in casinos, they also, with eight decks, you can't really shuffle eight decks. And, uh, and I am... I am busy analyzing that with some of my graduate students uh, uh, and uh, it's fighting back but we're we're making progress what they do in casinos is they they cut the cards into into groups like this and then they you know shuffle these pretty well and then shuffle these pretty well shuffle these pretty well shuffle these pretty well maybe seven shuffles for each packet and then they will you know take some of these some of these you know and transfer in that way and then shuffle these, shuffle these, shuffle these. You can ask, you know, how many shuffles, how many piles, how does it, how does it go? It's a math problem. Some of us are, are working pretty hard on it. It's open as of this writing. So next, next time, I hope I have an answer. So in casinos, you often see slot machines. You know, okay, out they come. No slot machine that is in casino nowadays works with physical randomness, gears and timing and stuff like that. All of them use computer chips that have pseudo-random number generators in them.